Since I'm creating so much Autolisp code related content on my channel, I felt obliged to create a video discussing whether or not it's still worth learning Autolisp. As you might be aware, Autolisp is considered dated or even obsolete by many. Autodesk is even dropping support for Autolisp. Don't panic quite yet, however. This doesn't mean that Autolisp code won't work in future releases of AutoCAD. This does mean that they won't be including the Visualisp editor in future releases. You should still be able to download the editor much the same way you can still download the Visual Basic editor. Autodesk dropped support for Visual Basic as well sometime in the past, but they still give you the opportunity to download that Visual Basic editor. So this is more or less just Autodesk's way of saying you're on your own. So while that doesn't mean that Autolisk code will stop working in AutoCAD, within the next few years at least, it could be signs of things to come in the future. So there's no guarantee that it'll work in, say, 10 years. I think Autodesk pushing Autolisp aside is a big mistake. One reason for this is that Autolisp provides more functionality faster than many other API languages. This is especially true for beginner to intermediate level Lisp programs. Another reason is that their closest competitor, BricsCAD, has not only continued to support Lisp, but also has enhanced its usage. They've created their own modern Visual Lisp editor. In this video, I'll go on to discuss why I learned Autolisp, how I learned Autolisp, and finally, I'll go over some pros and cons to learning Autolisp opposed to other programming languages, with a focus on API languages. Now onto how and why I learned Autolisp. We'll start with the how because that's probably more valuable to you. Let me start by saying that you don't need anything other than an internet connection to learn Autolisp. The best resources are available free online. My favorite is afrolisp.net, which I'll get more into in just a moment. My first exposure to Autolisp was through a book titled AutoCAD Secrets Every User Should Know. It's not actually, actually an Autolisp book, but rather contains a couple chapters on Lisp. It's what led me onto Lisp. It's quite outdated, but it's still a really great book. By far, the most useful Autolisp resource for myself has been afrolisp.net. The author creates excellent tutorials and explains things very well. The list contains many other great resources, and therefore, Afrolisp.net is the only internet resource I really need to share with you here. There are also books on Autolisp. You don't need to shell out a fortune on books, as the free online resources are plentiful. Comparing the books that come up on a typical Amazon search, the ones I've used are authored by Reynaldo Torgores. Forgive my pronunciation on that. His books come in four volumes, and David Stein's Visual List Developer's Bible. All these books are inexpensive and definitely helpful, especially when you move into more advanced programming. So now I'll explain uh, why I learned Autolisp. So what you're looking at right now is more or less the reason for me first getting into the code. This is a reinforced concrete suspended slab plan. And uh, it's gonna have multiple layers of reinforcing, a minimum two layers in the bottom and that's pretty easy to detail because it's just a typical grid throughout the whole slab. But then you have all this top steel and the top steel is not a typical typical grid. Therefore, it takes a lot of effort to de actually detail it. So at the time, I was working in an office that had very outdated standards. And although they did use uh, some Lisp routines, they weren't very good. Like what, one issue is that the Lisp routine would reset your, uh, your snap, uh, your object snap settings. And they had very poor layer control, so stuff was always ending up on, on the wrong layer. So um, this was kind of, this file here, it's not a real project. It's just kind of uh, an avenue for me to, it was an avenue for me to test these blocks I was making. At the time, my Lisp skills were very basic um, or non-existent, but my dynamic block creation skills were really, really good. So these are just very complicated dynamic blocks and i'll explain what they they are as quick as possible i don't want to spend too much time on this i'll change the field display variable to one to help me explain so all these are as fields so if i click on the block and for example i change the quantity the diameter and i can change the spacing of the bars and you notice the extents respond to that immediately. I'll explain why these aren't updating in real time in just a second, and I can change the stagger. So since these are these are actually fields within attributes nested inside this block, so if I do a regen all, so, it, so it'll update. 
So this system was going to be an improvement on the existing standards in that office and it, it was almost going to work. But one, one issue with this, and I mentioned the poor layer control, is that if, if these are on a layer that doesn't plot, and that was ha happening very frequently in, in this office. Like for example, these schedules might appear on a, someone might accidentally insert them on a no plot layer, a viewport layer, or what have you. And um, when you're checking your drawings, it's very easy to see, for instance, a typo, a mistake or something, but to find something that, that's missing, you know, like I usually check my drawings within model space itself, and then I'll glance at the the final um, product really quickly. It's very hard to spot something that's missing. So when you have one of these blocks here that would be, say, on the def points layer by mistake, or or a no plot layer, or whatever, it's, it's a very hard error to overcome. So I knew I needed a very simple Lisp routine just to make sure these blocks went in quickly and on the right layer. And if you're curious what that routine looks like, I have a very uh, very streamlined version of it in um, one of my playlists on here. So check that out if, if you're interested. It's a very basic routine, but quite versatile. So anyways, I will don't really care what layer this is on. But yeah, so this, um, I realized it was gonna speed the productivity in that office up quite a bit. And it also eliminated a lot of the possibility possibility of making errors because we're typing out these uh, these labels by hand there's I was noticing lots of typos lots of mistakes um, very repetitious work and it was just really really hard on the on the drafts people I'll just reset that uh, variable just to the reason I leave it turned off I know you don't know where your fields are now but it's a uh, much easier on the eyes so yeah, this this was going to work okay. I need a different block for each type of bar, as you can see. So before I ever implemented this in that office, uh, for various reasons, uh, a lot of them I actually quit and joined another office. And in that office, uh, me and an uh, engineer that took an interest in this, we got to work to see if we could implement this and actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis, actually see if it's ready for the big show, the real world. And unfortunately that office to, to cut costs they had to use, um, they had a bunch of perpetual licenses dating back to, I think, AutoCAD 2005. So if we save these in one version of AutoCAD and open it in a different version, we found that oftentimes our attributes or these fields just weren't appearing. So we'd lose all this, all this information, right? It, it looks something like this. After that, I knew like, God, I gotta, don't really have control over what this is doing. So unfortunately, all this hard work kind of went down the drain. I mean, a block like this could be useful. And uh, if you're interested in exactly how that works, I could make a quick tutorial on that. Just uh, leave a comment. So I started, that's when I started really digging into the Autolisp and getting better and better at it. And I'll, I'll briefly, sh briefly show you what I'm working on right now. And for this to work, I'll give you a hint. It uses reactors. I can't go too far into explaining it. But this gives me a lot of flexibility. In fact, it gives me even better flexibility than Revit because my my uh, label here is just multi-line text. So, you know, in Revit, you have the option of uh, rotating 90 degrees, zero degrees, but your labels are pretty much fixed. You can't, you can't shorten them like that if you're cramped for space. And like Revit, I've just chosen to have all my uh, parameters right here. I'll put my diameter in there. And you can see this this kind of works it works a lot better than the let's change that to nine just to see that those extent lines update in real time. This gives me a lot more flexibility than than what I've shown you previously. More flexibility than Revit in my opinion. Because all these are independent elements, you can move them as you need them, and, and these are just quick commands, list commands. See if I can remember them, because this is kind of a project I've, I've put on hold, so I haven't been uh, using it lately. But yeah, so this is kind of uh, reaching the highest level of Autolisp I can program. But um, getting up to that level, you know that, um, because since I created this, I've gone through different, more and more iterations, because I've never had a company really bite on this, really 
realize the potential time and money savings, not to mention the the reduction of errors. But anyways, um, I keep making various iterations of this and that makes me get better and better at the Autolist code. So even though I don't actually use Autolist for my reinforcing detailing at the moment, because I'm actually not, not doing it at the moment, it's opened so many doors as my as my code skills have gotten better. I've learned how to code so many different things that have helped me out in other areas. So I've, one thing I'll recommend later in this video, if I remember, is to think of like a fairly ambitious but achievable pro project that you can chip away at to help kind of help drive your motivation to uh, to learn Autolisp. Now I'll cover the pros to learning Autolisp. The first pro and probably the biggest is that at relatively the same skill level, an Autolisp programmer will be able to create a usable program much faster compared with other API languages. If you're wondering what API stands for, it's Application Programming Interface. Think of it like creating a program that steers AutoCAD in the direction you want it to go, but it only works within AutoCAD itself. You would never use Autolisp to create a standalone program, for instance only a program that works within AutoCAD. Same goes for any other API language and its respective host program. Although some languages can be used for both APIs and standalone programs, and I'll get more into this as, it is, as I discuss the cons of learning Autolisp. In my experience, it's significantly faster to create a simple to intermediate level program in Autolisp. But once you get into more advanced challenges, things start to change, especially when you're dealing with complex dialog boxes. However, some advanced programs are still well suited for Autolisp. Another pro is that your program doesn't need to be compiled before you test it out. In fact, you can get away with not compiling your code at all. Comparing Autolisp to say C-sharp, C-sharp needs to be compiled before it's run, whereas Autolisp can be debugged line per line as you write your code. You can almost instantly see where your code fails opposed to having to compile and recompile your program multiple times. The last pearl I'll discuss is compatibility from one AutoCAD release to another, as well as compatibility between various CAD programs, such as BricsCAD, GSTARCAD, and the various other AutoCAD workalikes out there. Unlike C Sharp, an Autolisp program will usually run just fine regardless of the AutoCAD version a person is using. Many Autolisp routines still function 100% perfectly even after 20 years. For C Sharp, and most other API languages, a program will likely have to be recompiled for each AutoCAD release. This isn't an insurmountable task, but it can lead to an extra expense, especially if you're having to pay a large fee to a third party. As mentioned, Autolisp code often works either right off the bat or with some minor modifications in other CAD programs. A quick warning, however, some programs only support the non-visual Lisp functions. Other programs provide full or near full support including BricsCAD and GSTARCAD. And there are at least a couple other ones I'm sure that also provide full support. So now onto the cons of learning Autolisp. Autolisp is great, but it might not be the right code to learn for many programmers. Remember when I mentioned that Autolisp is an API programming language? That means that anything you code will only work within AutoCAD and similar CAD programs. Compared to learning a language like c -sharp, the coding skills you acquire will be very exclusive to AutoCAD and AutoCAD work-like programs alone. Now, this doesn't mean that Autolisp isn't, say, a decent choice for a first language to learn, but if you're writing code for multiple programs or creating a standalone program, another programming language might be your best bet. So in short, the versatility of Autolisp isn't as broad as many other languages. The next con I'll discuss is the uncertain future of Autolisp. I personally see myself using Autolisp until I retire. Note that I'm 40 years old. I don't think it's, go it's going away within my working lifetime. I could be wrong here though. Other languages like C Sharp are less likely to become obsolete. That statement is more factual rather than opinionated. So keep that in mind. And while I see plenty of value in Autolisp, both now and into the future, it does have a higher chance of becoming obsolete compared to other languages. The last con I'll discuss is advanced code and dialog boxes. When your projects become more advanced, that's when Autolisp st starts to show its weaknesses. 
This is especially true for projects that utilize dialog boxes, and applies tenfold when those dialog boxes become more interactive and contain complex graphics. Dialogs are coded manually in Autolisp. And although there are various ways to get things to work like you want, it takes far less time in more modern programming languages. If the complexity of your code starts to ex exceed a certain threshold, you might want to consider learning a more advanced language. To conclude, let me start by saying that if you spend a lot of time in AutoCAD, Autolisp is an excellent choice as far as learning your first programming language is concerned. And even just a little bit of exposure to the Visual Lisp extension functions will give you a really good idea of how a modern, object-orientated programming language works. There's a lot of value to be had in just having a basic skill level in Autolisp, and you can reach that basic skill level very quickly. Expanding your skills from there is optional. That's one of the key reasons I'm aiming to keep my tutorials on this channel more towards the simple side of things. I expect that viewers will likely only use the video tutorials when they are first starting out, or if they only need to achieve a basic skill level. When things get more complicated, that's when you should start looking at a more advanced programming language. Learning basic Lisp, then moving on to a more po powerful language is a good strategy here. That about wraps up this video. So I hope this video was helpful for those of you that are on the fence as to whether or not you should learn Autolisp. Thanks very much for watching.